Today is day 267. We're reading the whole Bible this year. And today we finish out the book of Esther with chapters 6 through 10. So in chapter 6, the king chooses to read the royal records of events for sleep help, which is kind of hilarious. Um, but they read back the account that Mordecai is the one who had him saved, right? And so he wants to honor him at the same time that Haman comes in to try and make sure that Mordecai can be executed. And it's this one of these moments where we don't see the name of God, like we talked about yesterday. We don't see the name of God, but we see God's handiwork in the way things unfold. This is the moment when Haman is looking to have Mordecai executed, but instead the king is looking to have him elevated. And Haman thinks he's setting up his own parade. And instead he finds out, oh no, you get to be the guy leading Mordecai around and having him praised. That's the moment it flips. This is the center point of our chiasm. And now we're going to work our way back out in matching elements from the first half of the book. So before Haman even has a chance to do anything about how poorly that went from his perspective of having to go around with Mordecai and proclaiming how great he is, he's taken away and brought to the royal banquet with Queen Esther. And so seven matches the banquet in five. And we have banquet. King says, anything you want up to half my kingdom. Whereas the first time she just says, come to another banquet. This time the result is, let me tell you how Haman is evil and trying to destroy my people. And the king goes into a rage and steps out for a minute. And when he comes back in, Haman is on top of Esther trying to get her to recant and do something about this. And so then he's taken and executed in the means that he had set up for executing Mordecai. And so once again, we see the Lord's providence working through these events and setting it up so that Esther has the favor and ear of the king in a way that, I mean, it's almost a, just a given that he's going to do the thing that she's asking of him. In chapter three, where we had been introduced to Haman, he's elevated by the king. He's given all this status and wealth and power and He's given the signet ring, which is like the symbol, like when I wear this and show it, like whatever I say is as if the king himself said it. That's how he's able to pass that decree and so on. In chapter eight, we get the opposite. Esther is given Haman's estate. Esther brings in Mordecai and says, hey, this is my uncle. He's been part of all of this and he's the one who saved you. And the king's like, yeah, I'm all about it. Puts Mordecai in Haman's place as like the right hand man to the king gives him the signet ring he had taken off of the corpse of uh, Haman. And so you see this paralleled reversal of things. Again, God is working things out. He doesn't just prevent Haman from accomplishing his goal, but he in fact takes that place and swaps in his own people and blesses them that way. So with the signet ring, Mordecai is able to pass a decree. He can't undo the previous one that Haman put into place, but what he can do is put in something that gives the Jews the right to defend themselves and fight back, and nobody is allowed to stand against them. It provides a means for God's people to win the day, and they do. And they're able to do all of the things to their enemies that their enemies had planned for them, including all of Haman's sons are hung from the, their bodies are hung from the gallows as a sign against those who would stand against the Jews. All of this shows God's providence in protecting his people and looking out for his people, providing for them, not just allowing them to survive, but going out of his way to provide for them so that they can be blessed, protected, and even flourish, even in the midst of still being a conquered people within this Persian empire. One thing again, toward the end of chapter nine, in verse 20, it says, Mordecai recorded these events and sent letters to all the Jews and all of King Ahasuerus's provinces, King Xerxes, both near and far. He ordered them to celebrate the 14th and 15th days of the month of Adar every year because during those days the Jews gained relief from their enemies. That was the month when their sorrow was turned into rejoicing and their mourning into a holiday. They were to be days of feasting, rejoicing, and of sending gifts to one another and to the poor. And this, once again, the report here, it's not 
from Mordecai directly. It's not from Esther directly. It's a third party writing about these things, recording them. And it really seems like there must have been some form of faith and prayer involved in serving and giving glory to the Lord in this, in those moments. And yet whoever's writing this story down, whoever's taking this account is not religiously Jewish. And so they're not elevating or acknowledging any of the faith elements. They're writing down the secular version of this. It's just an interesting thing. I think, but I think that's why the name of God never appears in the book. I, I think that this might've been written by one of the, the, king's clerks or something this might be what was being recorded into his records and then also passed along back to the jews to be included in with the rest of their scriptures when we look at this we see even without naming god and giving him credit directly it is so easy to look and see his hand working through all of these events and we can praise him for that and we can rely on him for that. We can trust him for that. And we can know even in a place where it's not overtly geared towards him, even when we're not just in the house of worship, it's easy to be like, look, I saw God move while we were all worshiping together. Like, yeah, but what about when you're at school, when you're at work, when you're, you know, in community events that have nothing to do with church or maybe even seem anti our faith? We can still see and be aware of and participate in the move of God and the move of the kingdom within those times. And that's what I take away from the book of Esther. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So drop a comment on this or in the Bible app and let's talk about it. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Draw near to the Lord and be rad for Jesus.